Hallelujah. Well, I want to share something with you. Um, it's actually a thought sparked by Keith Moore. How many, how many love Keith Moore's ministry? Yeah, many. I love listening to his ministry, and um, he just you know, listened to a sermon that sparked some thoughts. Because last week we spoke from Psalms about praising the Lord and speaking to the snow, 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 because it's got to go, go, go. And in Psalm 147, it says, starts off with verse 1, Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and praise is becoming. In other words, what the psalmist is saying, praise is just right for you. When you are praising God, you are doing the right thing. And, you know, there's times when I'm ministering or praising God or speaking to someone and, and I'm moving in the things of the Spirit and you're just... I just feel so right. Have, have you know that feeling? You just, uh, this is, yeah, I just feel as if I am doing what God has called me to do and being who God called me to be. And um, that's a design, uh, you know, something I'm designed for, something that God has uh, me on earth for. This is just right. And, and, and one of the things is sometimes we're praising, like when, when the kids were singing, um, I often know when, when, I forget the, when I forget the atmosphere and I'm, I'm just so caught up in the praise, I even forgot, and I really appreciate, you know, often when you're watching kids, you're sort of caught up in the cuteness and that, but I forgot the kids were up there for a little bit of that, you know, when they were praising God. It was like, oh, I was just praising the Lord. We are just having a good time singing, Lord. oh yeah, the kids are doing it, you know what I mean? And that's good, isn't it? That's when you're, just, so that's, that's when you're kicking goals, you know, and you, um, you know, it, it's one of the best things when, um, when, when people just lose sight of what's happening and get so caught up. I remember it's one of, been one of the great challenges um, to me was reading a uh, biography on the life of Charles Spurgeon. He was with a great Baptist preacher and the Metropolitan Chapel. He would preach every Sunday and people would come from around the world to, to hear his teaching. And there was some people that came to hear the great preachers that were in London at the time and they went to one preacher and they listened and they wrote a report. They said, after we came away, they said, what an amazing preacher this man is. This is not Charles Spurgeon, they were at the other preachers. What an amazing preacher he is. What an amazing Bible teacher. What truth he was bringing to us. What the way he would speak. And they said, then we went to the Metropolitan Chapel. And they said, afterwards they wrote, they said, what an amazing saviour we have in Jesus. I thought, what a, that, that's, that's powerful, isn't it? They said, oh, we went there to critique a man and instead got our eyes on Jesus and forgot about the man. And that's what you want people to do. You know, you want people to say, that was an amazing sermon. I don't, can't remember who preached it, but I just remember what God spoke to me. I'm all good with that. I'm all good with that. Peter, P-E-T-E-R. If, if you do want to remember, <laughs> L-E-W-I-S, you know, hashtag. But that's good. God can get all the glory. He knows. But I'm made for it. I'm designed for it. I'm wanting for it. And... But it was interesting, Keith Moore was taking that concept and made me think a little bit more about it. You know, what were we designed for? What were we made for? Um, and how many, I, you probably can't see back there, anyone take a guess what this book is? You, everyone's probably got one. A car manual. Jay knows because he was there when I got it out of the fish out of the glove box or under the seat, there's a little compartment. This, from our car. It's a car man, an operating, if you own a car and you don't know you've got one of these, <laughs> you do, hopefully. When you buy a new car, you'll get one. Secondhand car, you should ask for it. Um, it'll be hidden somewhere, maybe under a, a seat compartment or in the glove box often. And this is, you say, well, what do I need to know? That You need to know these things. Because the people who wrote this know their car and they know the purpose for it. And um, what... This is what the car was designed for, is in here. This is what the car was made for. If you pull up to a petrol station and you say, I'm just going to get the cheapest whatever, no good. No good if you've not read this and discovered your car is a diesel. <laughs> is that right? Remember Cole Stringer um, sharing the story, how he pulled up and he, there was a person in front of him at the petrol station that did the wrong thing and really annoyed him and then... He had to drive around. It was just so annoyed, so annoyed. Yeah, anyway, he should come to next week and next month's <laughs> series. You know, in a, how, you know, dealing with people that are just not you, doing the wrong thing, 
And so he's so annoyed, so annoyed, so annoyed. So he started filling up and he realized he was putting petrol into his new diesel car. <laughs> so he had to call and get it towed. You can't even drive it to a mechanic. You'll, you'll ruin the engine. Because this book says, if your car is a diesel, you must put diesel in the fuel tank. If you put something else, it'll ruin it. Um, so how important is this? Oh, how good it would be to have one of these for our lives. <laughs> really? How good would it be <laughs> to have one of these that explains what you were made for? Because I was always thinking, you know, what I'm made for. Ephesians 2 talks about, you know, God has created us in Christ for good works, so the things that he's made us for, that I'm, a, you know, I'm, I'm at this part of the body and I'm doing this and I'm called to this. But it, this also tells you what you're not made for, what your car is not designed to do and what you shouldn't use it for because this will also give the limits and the restrictions of what you are not designed for. And um, I w I've never sort of stopped to think, hey, I am designed for certain things, but there's also things I am not designed for but it is possible to be doing it. You say, you mean I'm not designed for petrol? I'm designed for diesel? No wonder I'm having so much trouble. <laughs> no wonder. You're not meant to put sand in a petrol tank? Well, no wonder there's, you know. It, um, what can I do? What should I do? Um, and I, I was looking up different cars and things like that. Um, and... We, we bought, one of the first cars we bought for, you know, when the children um, was for, um, Caitlin's car is a Yaris, Toyota Yaris. How many know what a Toyota Yaris is? When we went to Tech, we said to people in Texas, oh, we've got, you know, got cars, we've got a small car, our daughter's got a small car. They said, oh, a Toyota car, you know, oh, Yaris. Oh, they said, yes, we've got one of those. At our, at back then it was um, our grandson Preston's got, a, you know. But it turns out he had a Camry or a Corolla. You know, it's one of, you know, I think it might have been a crawler. They don't know what a Yaris is in Texas. Like, they think a small car is what we call a medium car. Medium car. They did not have... When we said a small car, they didn't even know what a small car was. Because in Texas, every car is big. So if you've got a medium car, you've got a small car. And we're like, well, see, see, see that small car? Smaller. <laughs> <laughs> see that little car? Littler. That's the car that we've got. And they're like, really? They make them smaller? Yeah. Yeah. They sell them in other parts of the world, lots of them, but not here. Here, if your truck's, you know, only six cylinders, it's a bit, a bit underpowered. Um, so this Yaris. And you know what a Yaris is not designed for? Speed racing? Okay, tell me... Just from your knowledge, I'll tell you what it's not designed for, is towing. <laughs> is that fair enough? They, 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 whenever you buy a, Ford, a, a, a Toyota Yaris, do they say, do you want the, um, the, the tow bar option? <laughs> they, don't, they don't offer it to you. They didn't say, do you want the tow bar option? You know why? Because I looked it up, and especially, you know, there's different models and things like that, but you know, if you look up the current model, and, and in America, you look it up, the, the, the Toyota Yaris, they do sell it, they say, you know what the towing capacity of a Yaris is in America? The American zero. <laughs> you are not allowed to tow with a Toyota Yaris because um, you can in Canada, but not in America. Uh, yeah. Well, the reason is in, in, in America, you can tow a trailer, um, I think a bit like Australia, you can have trailers that don't have self-braking systems. So if you, if you put that trailer on the back of a Yaris and you stop, this, the, the Yaris has got to do the stopping. In Canada, you, you can only have a trailer with its own braking system, so it shares the load. So it's a bit, a bit weird. <laughs> but here. So, so zero. If I pulled up to the mechanics and I said, oh, this thing's running a bit rough. The gears are crunching, suspension's not handling. And they go, oh, we'll have a look at it, sir. And I think I said, I think it's still under warranty. I only had it 12 months. Already the gears are starting to slip and the, it's, it's just not pulling right. The steering, the, the brakes feel spongy. There's something wrong. 
And the guy is looking, and as he walks around, he notices a tow bar on the back of your Yaris. Have you ever been to a doctor's office, and you're talking there, and they ask you a question, they say, have you been under stress lately? Is that, is that a question a doctor asks? Now, that, you say, well, that's none of your business, doctor. Because <laughs> that's an emotional, that's a situation, that's something to do with my physical body. That's just something I may be going through. What's that got to do with the physical body, doctor? Or, you know, are, are you asking because you care? No, we're not friends. Why is he asking? Is he asking because he's a friend? Wants to, you know, having, oh, having stress? Why does a doctor ask, have you been in, under stress lately? Because he knows that it will affect your physical body. It will actually cause symptoms. So if the mechanic walks around and sees a tow bar and he says, have you been towing lately? It's pretty much the equivalent of a doctor saying, have you been under stress lately? <laughs> because we're not designed to carry some of the things that we carry. Our manual says zero kilograms in the towing capacity. But I need my stuff. <laughs> I need it. I've got, to, I've got to move. I've got to take a load of stuff. I need it. I can't go there without it. So I've got to put a tow bar on. But you're not designed for it. There are things you are designed for. You're designed to praise the Lord. But you are not designed to carry cares. Did you know that? He said, but if I don't carry it, who will? I've got to, I'm only, I know it's a bit of a struggle, but I've got to put a tow bar on me because these cares have got to be carried by somebody. <laughs> and I know it puts a bit of a strain on, but if I think if I drive slowly and work it fine, I'll be okay. I've gone quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> I never thought of that. You're not, we're not designed for certain things. You say, but that's unfair. How do I move house? If I can't, I mean, I got with the total, you, what sort of car have you got, Pre? A little Corolla. Did you put a trailer on your Corolla for the car? No, you didn't. Good. Give Pre a clan. Did you, Chris? Did you put a trailer? <laughs> the brakes are shot, but we got there, you know? Uh, Yeah, you can make things work, but that car is being damaged. It's not, and if it gets into a certain situation, it will not be able to stop going downhill with a load and suddenly it's got to stop. It can't. Suddenly it finds, you say, I'm going to take this car back to the manufacturer because the brakes failed. Going down a hill, a dangerous situation, <sighs> I'll have a word to this manufacturer. And he looks in the back and you've got a tow bar. And he said, were you towing something? Irrelevant. These brakes were designed to stop and they did not stop me. Well, you're not designed to tow. You're not designed to carry. You're not designed to, to do this. We are actually not designed to carry the cares. When God created us, he never planned for us to carry our cares. It was not in his original plans. And we see that in our instruction manual how many times he tells us not to carry them. And we say, yeah, but. <laughs> because there's two, you know, because we often think, well, the only option is to t take the trailer off and leave it behind, and that's irresponsible. Is that right? You say, well, that's unfair. If I've got to take the cares off and just leave them, that's irresponsible. I need that stuff. There's things that are important there. There's decisions that need to be made. There's help that needs to be given. There's something happening over the, in the next, this coming week. I can't just, this is a dumb thing to tell me that I can't carry things. I need to because if I don't, who will? There's a, if I'm not carrying this, and so, then I, if, I, if I put this off, it just becomes a problem. And, um, and God says, have you checked your manual? It does not say, unhook your cares. Isn't that, I think that's what God wants me to do, isn't it? 
He never tells you to unhook his head. Okay, so what did he say? Look at first, first Peter chapter 5. He never tells you to unhook your cares. 1 Peter 5, verse 7, he says to cast all your anxiety onto him. Now, in order to do that, you need to take it off. But you need it to transfer. It's a transfer. You are not designed for certain things. Shad... Meshach and Abednego were not designed to withstand the fire. But as long as they had Jesus, they were okay. Because he is the one that can handle it for you. You are, you're, you are actually designed to be a convoy. You are not designed to drive this road alone. You are given your vehicle with certain instructions to do what you're called to do and to be who you're called to be, but there are things that you are not designed to. And if you do them, your, your life will reflect things that it shouldn't. And you say, well, that's just what I've got to put up with. That's life. That's life living without the designer's instruction. He instructs us to hook our cares, our anxieties, onto him because he said, I can handle them. Is that right? Cast your cares onto him and then drive as a convoy. Now, the difficulty is if you want to unhook them, you've got to drive with him. <laughs> you can't then just say, you go wherever you go, I'll just go wherever I go because the stuff you need is hooked onto him. Yeah. He's got the answers and the provisions and the grace <laughs> Oh, I unplugged something, but I don't think I use that when I speak, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but whoever plays the guitar over there should check that. <laughs> According to the manual, <laughs> I don't need that. I, um, so, so our role is to unhook and put on and then get in the convoy. Um, and in this convoy, he drives first, and then you follow. Okay? When you get to your destination, don't say, well, I headed to the, my destination. Where is my stuff? Oh. That's why some of you have to keep it on your tow bar, because you want to go where you want to go. <laughs> so with a convoy, you've got to follow the leader, and he takes control, and he takes charge, and he's well built for it. He's designed for it. That's what he does. But he's quite happy with that. Um, all right, do you want to see this in how Jesus would talk? Because you know when Jesus would talk about this, he can't talk about towing capacity and things like that because that's not something they can talk about. But in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. What's a yoke where two animals come into connection? This is the equivalent of get into the convoy. Where you transfer your care onto him. You get into step with him and he carries the weight. That's the, that's the teaching. He's teaching us the same thing. All you who are weary and heavy laden, he's saying you are not designed to carry the cares that you are carrying. What's your answer? Throw off your cares. That's what some people do. Just don't worry about them. Just forget them. Don't worry about your cares. I'm not sure that's a good idea. That's, that's being thoughtless or reckless, irresponsible. Some of those things need dealing with. Some of them need answers. Some of them need steps to, of intervention. Some of them need, you know, it's, it's things that need to be, some need discipline, some need correction, some need fixing. So just to ca cast them off, you say, no, can't afford to do that. 
Some of them can go and they don't need to be carried. That is actually one thing you could do. Some of you are carrying stuff, stuff that even God's like, we'll dump that in the first corner. <laughs> God's like, okay, give me your cares. That, nah, that, nah, that, nah. What? It's my precious memories and, 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 and uh, my, that, that insult. I've carried that a long time. <laughs> That's one of my most precious memories there when they said that to me. Fourth grade, can you believe what my teacher said? Oh, that's, no, that goes here. I've been carrying that a long time. <laughs> he goes, oh, I will dump that. <laughs> wow. So there is some stuff you are carrying. There's some stuff you're carrying that doesn't belong to you. I think that's your neighbor's care. Yeah. <laughs> I just sort of take it along for the ride, you know. <laughs> sort of like his kid. He, he was on the phone to me and phew, put it in my trailer. <laughs> his neighbor's like living free because you're carrying their cares for them. Do you realize that? Your Yaris is overloaded because your neighbor is driving around not caring. Someone ought to care for what you're going through. Give it to me. <laughs> Is anyone here who has the cares of all the family and friends and neighbours? <laughs> and then you look over, and they're not even putting their trailer on. They're just going to the beach for the day. You hardly get up a hill. Then you get mad with them. Like, this is your care. Good thing I'm praying for you. Um, so there's some things you don't, you shouldn't have. They're not yours. Some things, God says, that's not today's care. You shouldn't even have it today. Some things you get on a, on a schedule, and then you put it, and then you give it. And he said, that's not even today's care. That's Friday's care. That's next month's care. That's next year's care. Isn't that what Jesus said? Don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow has got its own cares so some of you are driving with stuff you shouldn't even be carrying it but it's not even god's like oh, don't even give it to me it's just that's for down the road we'll take care of that some of you are caring and worrying about things that you shouldn't because they're not even applicable jesus said there's some things you know you can't change some things oh, that's what prayers for yeah i said some i didn't say all you know, for instance, Jesus said, you cannot change your height by your worry. He said, so I'm, I'm echoing him, don't blame me. You know, if you've got a certain height and you go, oh. kids, it's all right, you will change your height, all right? But it's not by your worry, it's just by your eating right and living right. But there's, Jesus said, you can't, uh, you can't change some things by worrying about them. All right, you can't... You can't um, you, you, so there's some things you, you're carrying and it's like, this, that's not for you to worry about. It's just, that's, that's how it is. Just get on with the stuff that I've called you to do. So for everyone who's got a load that you throw off the things that should be forgiven and forgotten. Jesus says, I cast your sins as far as the east and the west, and you say, yeah, but I cast mine. No, I don't cast mine. I hang on to them. <laughs> my failures, I've still got some of my failures which I'm worried about. I've got some of the things that hurt me that I'm still holding on to. No, no. So lighten the load even with that. There's some stuff you shouldn't be carrying. You shouldn't be carrying people's cares that are not your responsibility, and, un and you shouldn't be getting under the weight of them. Don't do that. And, and we've got, we got to protect ourselves from this. You know, um, Jesus sh shared a parable about this. He said, um, the sower went out to sow, and, he, and, he, and the seed of the word went in four different places. And when the third place it went into was the soil where um, thorns grew up, and it and trapped it. What was it? The worries and the cares of this world ensnared it. So that some of these cares come on, we shouldn't even have them in our trailer. We're like, no, 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 no. You know, I'm not taking you in because they will just entrap me. 
So there are some things that try and squeeze you and we just push them out. We say, out of my trailer, out of my trailer. You don't need, that's not even mine to worry about. Some of the things I'm worrying about are tomorrow. God will take care. Now, I'm not saying don't plan. I'm saying the worry, the concern. And um, so then there are some things still left there. Genuine things that need to be dealt with, things that you need to face, things that you need answers for. With those ones, then you unscrew them from your trailer, from your, your tow bar, take that and then say, now, I cast them onto you. We're going to travel together, but I'm not going to carry the weight of this. I'm actually not designed for it. It's like, uh, and some people are, oh, God, we'll go 50-50 with this because I feel a little bit bad about not, you know, I've got to earn my keep here. Some of you feel, you know, it's just, it's just wrong to give it all to God. He's like, you are not designed for this. You are not designed for this. You are designed to carry four passengers and one suitcase maybe. This is what you are designed for, your family, your life, your calling, your gifts, and then you will find just right. But everything else, put on, and then get in the convoy and let me carry the stuff. And God says, I'll take care of that for you. And he takes care. And we get, that's the yoking in him. Now, when you get into a yoke, you've got to um, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. You shall find rest for your souls. So my yoke is easy. My load is light. Notice that learn from me. That's a learn how to get in step with me. A yoke is designed for two, but if you do it right, he takes the load. And you're just walking. If you get out of step, it'll push. It'll come back and it'll chafe. It'll get all out of... I've, I've never had experience in being in a yoke. Um, I'm just guessing. Or out. I've never been a cow or an oxen and had to do this. I'm just imagining what it's like and from my observation and from the things I've read and heard. But my understanding is that an oxen has to learn how to get in stop and they put a senior, strong, mature oxen with a young one to teach it and to train it how to, to work. And it, if you do that, things get easy. You are not designed to carry care. That's why he says things like casting all your care. How much did he say? All. Yeah, he said, we've learnt anything, you've learnt that. <laughs> he said, Maybe I can get one of them in little mini trailers. <laughs> Just for the personal stuff. <laughs> Just the little stuff. You know, I know I'm a little car, I get a little trailer. All. You are not designed. What is the towing capacity of a, a Toyota Yaris? Zero kilograms. What is your care capacity that God has designed you for? Zero. And you say, yeah, 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 I know, but. I know what they say, but. And if you say, I know what God says, but, I think I can carry a little bit. God says, your capacity is zero. Because this is what I've told you, and this is my instructions. And um, how many times does God say, um, Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, this is your, this is your instruction for what you are allowed to carry. All right? This is your... What things can I put in my car? What things can I have? Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there's any excellence, anything worthy of praise, your mind should dwell on these things. Oh. These things. In verse 6, just before, it says, be anxious for nothing. How much care should you have? How much anxiety should you have? Zero. There are things for you to carry and there are things for you not to carry. You say, I can't carry all those things. My car is full. 
of my anxiety. <laughs> well, just, no, 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 you're all right. Your job is to fix your heart on those other things. Meditate and chew. Fill your life with those things. Put, but have, have zero anxiety. If you are carrying anxiety, you are out of design. All right? And you don't want to, you don't want to void your warranty. It's not what God has planned you for. You're like, ah! Um, let's just look at one more scripture to show that Jesus did understand how cars work and he talked about this all the time. Matthew chapter 6. Finish here. Matthew 6. Um, for this reason I say to you, do not be anxious for your life. To what you shall eat, what you shall drink for your body, as to what you shall put on, is not life more than food and more body than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, and as they do not sow, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them, and you're, you are worth much more than they. God's not very green, actually. We are actually worth more than the birds. Sorry for anyone that, that hurts, but <laughs> not really. And which of the, you, by being anxious, can add an anger? Add a single cubit to your lifespan or your height. Why are you anxious about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory did not clothe himself like one of these. But if God so raise the grass of the field which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown in the furnace, will he not much more do so for you? O oh, men of little faith. It's all, see, all this is actually connected to it. It's a faith thing. The transfer of the trailer is a faith act. Do you understand that? It is a trust that your stuff will be cared for and, you will be, and will be when you get to your destination, it's there. If I do not trust him in that, I will hold on to it myself. I must trust him to help me lighten the load by tossing the stuff I don't need. Ah, just trust me. You don't need this. All right? God says to some of you here, trust me, you don't need that. But, but, but. Trust me, you do not need that. But, but, but where I'm going, trust me, you do not need that. Where you're going, you do not need that. Your life in the future, you do not need that. Trust me to get rid of it. <sighs> but you never know. How many, has anyone got a box of stuff for if you never know? <laughs> has anyone got a cupboard of stuff? For if you never know. Have anyone got a garage full of stuff for if you never know? An attic of stuff that you never know. Have you got, is under your bed full of stuff of you never know? Yeah. Just. O oh, men of little faith. It is a faith issue, a trust issue. Do not be anxious then saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we clothe ourselves? For all these things the Gentiles eagerly seek, they load themselves up with this sort of stuff. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Seek first His kingdom, His righteousness. All these things shall be added to you. Therefore, don't be anxious for tomorrow. Tomorrow will care for itself. Each day is enough trouble of its own. Just learn to roll this stuff. So learn, first of all, there's stuff that God does not want. You know, you know when it says cast our cares on Him? Some of the stuff He does not want. <laughs> all right? I'm just telling you, some of it, He does not want some of it. Some of it, He says, we're just going to dump that. Get rid of it. Let it go. We're not going to be dealing with that tomorrow and the next day. I have had things that we have moved four or five times. We have moved house. And I have moved it into storage. And the next time we moved house, guess what I've done? Moved it again. It's never come out of the box. But it goes to the next place. Next thing. You know, wouldn't it be great if someone who could see down and I says, why don't you get rid of that now? And let's stop this game of keeping it going. <sighs> Got to deal with this and deal with this and deal with it. Like, Just get rid of that. No more dealing. Done. You know what? 
I can give all this with confidence because it's all instructions for the one who knows us, designed us, understands what our capacity is and what we can do. And when we do this, do you know what your towing capacity becomes? You know, like I was looking up, you know, biggest towing capacities. In, in a, there's cars like, um, anyone know, uh, I think it's a Ford. I'm not a big car person, but there's a F-150. Anyone know an F-150? Oh, How many know an F-150? Big trucks sort of them. And then you're driving and you see an F-250. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you, if, you, if, you just, if you don't know what that means, just, just enjoy Mark's. You're like, oh, you know, the 250. Now, that's like 150, but a man's 150. Like a, 150 is already a man's car, but like 250 is like, serious. Then I'm driving in America and I pull up behind an F350. I'm like, this thing is almost too wide for the lanes. Do you know what I mean? It's seriously tires like this, or sometimes double tires on the back. You know, <laughs> so you've got two tires on each side on the back. The Yaris doesn't come like that. <laughs> these are these are beasts of a car. You know, like it's, you know, it's it's just basically pull into the service station, fill it up, drive around the block, and then fill it up again. <laughs> it's just, you know, just, just give up. Just just stay at the petrol station. Just run the car and just keep it full. You know, like like you know when your bat your, your phone just got to keep it plugged in. I think that's what some of these cars have got to do. <laughs> Beasts. I, but I was looking, I think there's like an F, do you know there's a 450? 550? 650? I've never seen these cars. I don't know how big and strong they are. But, oh. but you look up towing capacity, and like, these things can... I, I, I thought, I saw one, you know, this was just referred not to an advertising, it was like earth-moving cars. These are cars designed to move huge lines. God is well capable and designed to carry anything. He is designed. This is how he designed it. He said, okay, cares will come. How do I design someone? He says, how do I design you? He says, cares will come. He says, what I'll do is when you're facing something, I'm designing myself to carry the load in sync with you. It's called faith. Your faith is designed to be a joint transfer where you take his your care and put on him and he carries you and then you take his the things he loves and the things he wants because you know there's a transfer it says seek first his kingdom and his right that's how faith works we transfer we, we work together i take the things that he's got on his heart and he takes my cares and together we're meant to be in that but someone says, you, know, you have to give them a bit of space, they're under a lot of stress. What does that mean? They're carrying something. If people are making that statement, that means I'm not, un <laughs> the gears are grinding, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not designed to be under stress. I'm not, that's not my design. If I'm under stress, I'm not doing it right. I've got to learn this to transfer. He's doing really well considering all the stress he's under. If I'm driving in the Yaris, no one should say that because there shouldn't be anything that I'm hooked up to. You don't say, oh, you're doing well considering what that big truck's carrying. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm not carrying any of the weight. This car is doing really well because this car is not connected to the weight. That's your challenge. That's your challenge. Why don't you stand with me? This is what you're designed for. This is what I'm made for. This is what God's planned for me. This is what he has for me. Hallelujah. Free of that worry and care and rolling that onto him. And then he will give instruction. Yeah, some of the things need to be dealt with. He says in, in Hebrews 12, he disciplines us as a father. He wants to correct and care and do things. But he does it. That's my seeking the kingdom response not my I'm under worry response. I've given it to him. If he tells me to do something, well, I'm just simply being obedient to him. I'm just doing what he's telling me. And there's a grace and a freedom to do that. There's a joy. I, I've taken his yoke. It's easy. It's light. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a pressure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. It's not, it's easy to do what he's called me to do and be who he's called me to be. It's just what God says. And 1 John 5 says, you know, his commands are not burdensome. They're not a pressure. It's not, when he tells me to do something, it's not hard. Because there's a grace and an anointing and ability to do them. That's someone trying to fix the, um, yeah. Yeah. Apparently there was a guy up here who kicked it out, but we won't, don't know where he is, but some people. Hallelujah. Let me just pray for you. Hallelujah. You know what? And I'm going to make this prayer as if it's your first time prayer. But it can be everyone's prayer. But maybe you're watching, maybe you're here, and you think, you know, I've never really hooked up with Jesus. <laughs> I've been, you know, you, you can be in the same paddock, it doesn't mean you're in the same yoke. You go to church all your life, it doesn't mean you're actually yoked in with Him. You can sleep in a garage, it does not make you a car. This is about actually rolling onto him. And, you, know, you, you can be in, around the church, you can be watching. This can be your first time watching online or it can be your hundredth time watching online. There comes a moment when you say, I'm going to use my faith to roll and connect with him. And this is actually, I get in yoke with him. You know, one of the great exchanges is he takes our sin and says, dealt with. He takes our past, says it's no longer bringing the curse that was connected with it dealt with he takes our future and says dealt with he's got a plan and a place he makes a place for us it's a really good deal but it does require a hundred percent connecting in with him it's a great thing so i'm going to lead you in a prayer and whether this is your first time praying this or your hundredth time praying this it's a good thing to, to do you say Heavenly Father, I on purpose take the cares of my life and I hook them up to you and I embrace you. I love you. You are the leader in my life. You care for me more than anybody else. I trust you with my future. I trust you with my cares. I thank you for all you do for me. You embrace me and make me your own. You give me authority to be called your son. And I walk in your freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen.